This is one example on how to determine the enthalpy change of a combustion reaction. And we're going to deal with uh, methane, which is a combustible gas. We're going to have this setup that's over here where we're looking at um, the ring stand. We've got the methane in the bottom right down here. And then we've got some water right up here that's going to get heated up and that's the part that I'm going to be measuring. So if we take a look at this problem, it's telling us what we've got. It says that we're determining it for methane CH4 and that we have 5.00 grams of that methane. So we've got a mass down here of methane CH4 equal to 0 0.500 grams. And then we look at the rest of the problem and it says that we are heating um, this water that's above it from 23 degrees Celsius to 49.7 degrees Celsius. So that's my temperature change. I'm going to have my change in temperature is equal to my final temperature minus my initial temperature, so 49.7 degrees Celsius minus 23.0 degrees Celsius. It also tells me that the amount of water that I have in there is 100 grams. So here my mass of water is 100.0 grams. And finally it's telling me that the specific heat of water is equal to 4.184 joules over grams degrees Celsius. So that's C is equal to 4.184 joules over grams degrees Celsius. Now the reason why it gave me the specific heat capacity of water is because the changes that I'm measuring are in water. And so hopefully you're seeing these values, the delta T, the M, the C, and you're thinking, haha, this must mean we're dealing with Q. Q is equal to MC delta T. All of this information we have for the water. But we have this other information down here. We know that we want what we're dealing with in relation to the methane, the thing that we're burning. It's just that we can't burn it directly because, or get the data for it directly because there's no safe way to do that. Um, sorry, I have a cat running on my laptop right now. Okay, let's try again. So we're going to type in some of these values and figure out what we've got so far. So we're going to figure out what exactly is that delta T value, so I take that into my calculator and I take 49.7 and I subtract from that 23.0 and I get 26.7 as my delta T. So I'm going to start writing this out. My Q is equal to the mass, which is given to me 100 Point zero grams of water times my specific heat capacity of water, 4.184 joules per grams degree Celsius. I'm going to multiply that by the calculated uh, change in temperature that I just figured out, which was 26.7 degrees Celsius. And I can see that some of my units are canceling out already. So I've got grams on top and on bottom, so those cancel out. Same with Celsius on top and on bottom, those cancel out. So when I do this calculation, 100 times 4.184 times 26.7, get a very large number in joules. Now that is the number that is kicked out by my calculator. It is far too many significant to just for us to be dealing with, but I don't want round off error either. So I'm going to keep it like that for now. We're going to keep this value in our back pocket for now and we're going to get back to it later. For right now though, again, we want everything in relation to the methane. We want it in relation to methane. So it only gave me information, because it was the only thing that I could measure, of the mass of methane. So I want a final unit in kilojoules per mole, or joules per mole, depending on what the problem is. Um, 
and I have to get this into moles. So I have to think back to earlier in the school year. How do I convert to moles? Well, I'm going to have to look at the periodic table for that because the periodic table gives me the molar mass in grams per one mole. So CH4 is composed of one carbon and four hydrogens. And I look at the periodic table and I see that carbon has a mass of 12.01 grams per mole. And then I look at the periodic table and I see that each of my hydrogen have a mass of 1.01, .01, but there's four of them, so four times 1.01 .01 is 4.04 .04 grams per mole. So I'm going to go through and calculate that. I'm going to get a unit of grams per mole, and I get 16.05 grams per mole. So now I take that value, and I take my given, and I'm going to convert this given into moles. So I have, always start out with my given, 0 0.500 grams, and then I set up a fraction that contains this information, and I want to get rid of grams, so I put the grams on the bottom, 16.05 grams, and that's equivalent to one mole. So in my calculator, I'm taking 0 0.500 and I'm dividing that by 16.05 and I get a number of moles of methane that were burned equal to 0 0.03115264797500. Again, that's just what my calculator is kicking out at me. That's not how I want to write my final value. Um, and that's moles. So this problem didn't ask us to convert to kilojoules, so we don't need to do that. If we did, we'd have to set up a conversion like we did down here, where we're saying, okay, the equivalencies, there's 1,000 joules per kilojoule, put 1,000 on the bottom, one on the top. I would divide this answer by 1,000. But it's not asking me to, so I don't need to. So now I have to take these two pieces of information that I just calculated and put them together because I want joules per mole to figure out the enthalpy change of the combustion. So my new value is going to be what I had for my first one in joules divided by that super duper long number in moles. It'll take me a second to type in all of those. Then we can talk about sig figs. Because there are way too many numbers here. So when I type that in, and hopefully I typed it in correctly because I'm not double checking, I've got 358,598.00088009. That's all of the numbers that my calculator kicks out at me, and that's in joules per mole. But now I can deal with sig figs. So I'm going to look back at all of my original information to figure how many sig figs they each had. Um, so I've got here. Anytime I have a zero after a decimal point that's following a whole number, so here's my whole number and it's following that, then those zeros are significant. So I have three sig figs there. And then I look at this one. I've got a one, which is a whole number, and then I've got a zero, zero, and a decimal place. So that's telling me that those zeros are significant. And it's also, since it's following a whole number, that zero at the end is significant. So this one has four sig figs. Now, I did it in my head, but uh, you would, if you're doing subtraction, look a little bit differently at the, the sig fig rules. But when I wrote it out, I knew my rules and I didn't talk about them. This value here is what we're looking at that has three sig figs and I knew that I had to have, after the decimal point, the same number as my lowest number of sig figs. Both of these had one, which is why I had one number after my decimal point. 
and then the specific heat capacity of water that is a given and so or not a given it's a constant and so I don't have to include that in the determination of my significant figures so my lowest number of sig figs I've got a four here a three here a three here my lowest number is three sig figs so that means that this number needs to be in three sig figs the nicest way for me to deal with that is to first put this number with those three sig figs so it'd be three five nine because this is no longer significant but it's five or greater so it rounds that up zero 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 and I wouldn't do a decimal and all the other stuff because th that would then insinuate that all of the zeros behind it would be significant and they are not. So here's my three significant digits. These are just placeholders. So if I don't like all those placeholders there, what I could do is write this in scientific notation. So my first number has to be somewhere between one and nine. And so I've got a three there and then 0.59 and then times if I was to get this number back to this number it's one two three four five times so it's ten to the fifth joules per mole and that's it